right, and welcome back. This is episode 17 of the Boom Fit Bros with Gus Warden, myself, and Mr. Charlie Lima. What's up, guys? How are we doing today? We're good. You pop the top yet? Oh. <laughs> Just wait. On it. cue, right okay. there. There it is. Thank you, Gus. <laughs> You're welcome. I just, you know, figured I'd help you out a little bit because you seemed a little behind the game today. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, that was unplanned. <laughs> this is all unplanned. <laughs> <laughs> completely unscripted for the most part um the content is pre-planned most of the time yeah um <laughs> so last week um we talked about sneaky calories you know those little things that you're probably not taking into account but actually do have a large impact on they, your waistline. you're not counting them but they're counting right this isn't vegas where you go yeah. and like what happens in vegas stays in vegas like it's not like the tastes that you take don't count. Yeah. They, they absolutely count. And it adds up. <laughs> they I do. I mean, you know, I think, you know, I, I thought about this after, but back in, you know, when I was growing up, we'd go to Sam's Club every weekend, mm-hmm. and they have so much food there. Like, on a weekend, if you want to go. Oh, you I mean, can go and sample everything. You can eat. I mean, it's like a buffet. Yeah. I mean, they have. And, and when Although, I, I don't know, like, the Sam's Club buffet. <laughs> <laughs> it's free 99. Yeah. <laughs> But the uh, the same thing, you know, today at H E B or all these places, and you just can eat, and you don't even think about what you're eating or drink or yeah, drink, yeah, yeah. like wine samples, too. yeah. And so that stuff adds up too, you know. Or like and, the lady that's like there, like cooking in the middle of the store, yeah, and, giving like, away giving away wh- free whatever samples. they're making. All of it adds up, and like even just to give you an idea, one little spoon of peanut butter it, it's close to 200 calories. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't track it. Because they think, oh, it's just a spoon. Yep. And then they go and they cook dinner. Oh, it's just a taste. But yep. like by the when it's all said and done, you can easily rack up like five hundred to a thousand calories yep. and hidden. And that's why calories. I think tracking your calories helps because it makes you aware of it does the little sneaky calories if you put those in. If yeah, if you, and that's the and then we and we talked about that a little bit too. Um, but you do have to be diligent in mm-hmm. actually tracking those things. And here's the thing. When, when people come to the realization that, oh, like I actually do have to be tracking those little tastes and whatever, um, that's that moment when most people actually start to like make breakthroughs because they're like, well, if I have to track it, I don't want to eat it. It's exactly right. And then their you know, three-month plateau where they haven't been able to lose any weight miraculously disappears because they're now factoring into account those calories. Yeah, or and, and you can them. even point that back to habit because I think sometimes you just absolutely. do those little things out of habit. Yeah, absolutely. It's not that you even want them or they they taste amazing. It's just like, oh, I always eat this. I mean, great example. Whenever I cook, yeah, I'll taste. Mm-hmm. But you know, but again, like my cooking is a lot different than like what most people think of, like you know, casseroles and desserts right. and baking all these dishes and I'm like sitting here like you know grilling chicken it's kind of hard to yeah. sample raw chicken <laughs> or not really advised either so. I am guilty when I grill Do you of, sample raw chicken? No oh thank raw god chicken, but I'll eat a lot in you know I'll grill and then I'll kind of cut a little sample yeah a little bite here a little bite there yeah and it, it does add up I, I mean, mean I've done that up. with beef and you can eat you know 800 calories in samples easily before you actually eat your meal. Easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. So, now, today um, is going to be a little bit different. So, here, um, this was more of a philosophical Ooh. kind of problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, uh, I think a lot of our, our uh, talks become nutrition philosophy nutrition philosophy <laughs> the, the nutrition philosophers <laughs> philosophy uh, where we sit and read fine books and bathrobes and smoke pipes drink C4 and drink C4 <laughs> uh, and act sophisticated when we're really not um, but no uh, so this one gets a little bit more into um, thoughts that I had and if you know me well enough uh, my thoughts can get kind of I don't know I don't really want to say interesting I don't want to give myself that much credit but um, that I think they're interesting uh, anyway so I was writing this today um, because I had the thought of um, I'm not really 
and I didn't before, but I didn't really have much of a reasoning to back it until now. I don't really buy the excuse that people don't have the time to eat healthy. I just don't think they like the taste of the things that are conveniently healthy. Hmm. And I get it. Um, but here's a little statistic for you. Um, and remember that 99% of statistics are made up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not, the, <laughs> not this one. Uh, there was a study done to where like, they timed people who went in um, fast food uh, drive throughs and then they also timed another group of people going in and out of the grocery store. Both had one task, and that was to get lunch. Uh, and the people going into the grocery store, they knew what they were getting. And the people in the drive through they probably also know what they're getting because we're creatures of habit, and we always order Big Macs and McDonald's drive through mm-hmm. lines or Quarter Pounder with cheese or whatever. Chicken nuggets <laughs> at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're not chicken. At, it's not chicken at McDonald's. Um Chick-fil-A is they're tasty. Uh, and they do have good chicken. <laughs> spicy chicken. Specific. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Uh, anyway, they timed both groups, and they found the stark revelation that um, the group that went into the store, and they got, like, you know, deli meat and, like, an apple or two, and then went in the self-checkout line and got back into the car, took the same time or less than it did to go through the drive through and get a Big Mac. Mm. And see, people think fast food – is fast food and it is so, fast yeah it is fast but the, i mean like there are other options i agree and, and you like don't tell me you don't have time to go drive across town that everybody's got a grocery store even if it's like a um oh what's that even if it's dollar general oh yeah you can go into dollar general and you can get deli meat and an apple yeah it, it, you can you, do it and i think where this i think you the big argument or the big point here is you're saying that people want tasty, you yes, know, delicious. Yeah, it's not their, necessarily yeah. the I don't have time reason. It's the I want it to taste. I really want my good. food to taste good. Yeah, you know? and, and I think that a lot of times what I've learned, and, and I've lived both worlds. I have lived. I mean, I, I, the fast food was probably seventy percent of my week between. Burger King, right? Oh, God. You went to Burger oh, King? Oh, man. I loved a Whopper with cheese. Seriously? Yeah, I didn't think anybody would. No. I don't even know how that chain's still in business. I lived with... Bur- I, I did Burger King. I did Whataburger. Um, taquitos. Oh. I did Taco Cabana. I've done Taco Cabana. Taco Cabana. Cabana. Um, I've done uh, Taco Bell. I've done... Back when we thought Taco Bell was the place to go in the 90s. Yes. Yeah. I, so, I, I mean, I you name McDonald's, I lived on Quarter Pounders with cheese. Mm-hmm. So I, I have lived that world. And, 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 and for me, that was delicious. Like, yeah, I love it. Tastes it tastes good. It does. And now I live in a different world, but it's still delicious. Like, I don't think I eat anything that I don't think is delicious. And I feel like so much of... How it tastes to you is what you're convincing yourself it tastes like. So if you learn how to eat healthy food that tastes – there's healthy food that tastes good and learn to fuel yourself off of that, you can – I mean oatmeal. Let's start with that. That's pretty simple. You can buy brown sugar, oatmeal, and put a ton of sugar in your oatmeal, and it can taste really sweet, and you can think that's how – or you can eat plain oatmeal – and you can say, oh, well, plain oatmeal is gross. Well, you put some blueberries in it, and I can eat plain oatmeal with blueberries and cinnamon. It tastes great. Well, I think also, too, um, and and this is a, a, an interesting thing. So me and Brittany have been on this kick of watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay shows. Mm. And um, this has bled over into my current life from me <laughs> thinking that I can cook like Gordon Ramsay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but, but for real, so, but I did, I, so I, it actually did get me thinking and I was like, I wonder if I can cook healthy meals that just taste better with really not much more time put into it. Uh, and the answer is you can. Um, and it really was as easy as like for the, for example, the other night we had, uh, we had stuffed chicken breast. With sun-dried tomatoes, spinach, mozzarella cheese. Mm, and then amazing. baste it with a little bit of butter and minced garlic on top. Uh, and then top a little bit of uh, Parmesan. Wow. Um, That's amazing. I got the recipe off the internet. 
I Googled easy chicken recipes. And then I followed it up with Gordon Ramsay. I put his name in the search bar. And it brought up these videos and these like little articles about how Gordon Ramsay prepares chicken. And it's really not that far off of what uh, I used to do, which is pull it out of the fridge and just cook it and pray to God that it's not dry as a leather <laughs> strap, which it usually is. There are a few other steps which involve like letting the chicken come to room temperature and uh, and then covering it with a very small amount of butter before you bake it in the oven and then separating them apart a little bit so they have room to breathe. I'll tell you what, even reheated, it tasted moist. And it was good. And it didn't take me any more time than what I would have normally done to cook a mm. meal. Um, it was just different. Yeah. Um, and so my argument is that, like, you can make anything taste good. And I've actually thought about, like, just making, like, you know, recipes that are healthy that don't take much time and just posting them just to show people that you can. But, like, it, it becomes, like all things, um, time magically appears yeah. when you put effort towards that goal. And I think the argument of, of time, right, of in and out, right, whether it's fast food or or like Gus says, going to the grocery store, we all have this pressure most of the time to, mm-hmm. whether it's get something quick, you know, if we didn't plan ahead. And that's me too. And, and you know, I'll, I'll go to Rudy's and I'll get, you know, half a pound of turkey and it takes me seven minutes, right. five minutes sometimes, you know. But, but knowing, and I think that's a lot of times people wonder like what to do. You know, like yeah. you suggested going to the grocery store, getting turkey, almonds, and fruit, right? Yeah. Perfectly healthy, balanced meal comparatively to McDonald's quarter pound of cheese, french fries. Um, and I think sometimes people get stuck. What do I get? Where do I go? Yeah. Fast food yeah, is a, just everywhere. So eating, I, I mean, like, and here's the harsh reality. Eating healthy is a skill, especially in today's day and time. When mm. it's like that's so true. Well, th- I mean, think about it. The average American is overweight. Seventy percent of the population of America is overweight or obese. Mm. So, by definition, average means that most people are overweight, and it's because of the habits and the attitudes and the beliefs and the uh, the things that they do on a regular basis. Um, what makes healthy people different is also those ha- attitudes and beliefs and skills and things that they do. Uh, but again, it's just like, like even overweight people, like God bless them. They are very good at things that I am not, you know, because they've spent time developing whatever skill that is. It could be like, you know, photography or, or cooking or whatever, but eating healthy in and of itself is actually a skill that you do have to devote some time to. Yeah. And there's a learning what, curve. And, and there's a, uh, and, and maybe you, you've heard this too, but I remember when we teach a lot of the Olympic lifting. And they say that, you know, in the very beginning when you're learning those, or gymnastics, right? Some of those high skill, challenging movements that for there's three phases you go through. Phase one is I have to think really hard every time I'm working through every step of this movement. So if I'm doing a snatch, Mm -hmm. I have to really think, okay, as I'm coming from the ground, arms straight, knees back, okay, as I'm coming through pockets, you know, arm straight, don't pull, hip extension, shrug, shrug, and then elbows high. And you're thinking through all this, and it makes you feel like... Overwhelmed. I, yes. Then yeah. they go, okay, that's phase one. You're thinking about everything as you're doing it. Phase two, you're actually still thinking about it, but it happens a little bit more natural. In other words, you are, you know, you did a hip extension, shrug, high pull, and wow, that, like it happened in... Like, you know the sequence, the sequence but now it's happen, just getting the yeah. reps. And, and then phase three is you don't even think about it. It's like automatic. Like, you're doing Isabel or that 30 snatch workout, and it's just looking so fluid, and they all look really good. And and I think what you're describing in, in this, I think, is phenomenal. It's a skill. So, like, in the beginning when you transition from, let's be honest, what tastes really good and is really fast. fast yeah. Yep. That, you know, um, to – Maybe just having to think really hard. And what that looks like is, okay, I'm in my car. I'm in my car right now. I have 30 minutes for lunch. What do I do? I'm in, you know, we are located at Rock Prairie and Longmire pretty much. You have 30 minutes. What do I do? And so (laughs) for me and probably for Gus, like 
several options come up to mind. You could go to Freebirds, you could get a salad, you could go to Kroger, you could get, you know, healthy options kind of like you could hit the highway and go to Chipotle you if could, you're really feeling if you're re- if the lights do you good it, and, and it's not peak <laughs> meal time. That's right. Yeah. Um, I've even gone to the C and J's at um, Southwest, Southwest Parkway. Parkway. And so you and, and so you have all these different ideas in and but what what you're having to do whenever you're not in that default setting of healthy is you're starting to think, okay, there's Whataburger, you know, there's there, McDonald's, there's McDonald's. You're like thinking Subway. Of, yeah. You're thinking of all the options that are not healthy, but fast. And so you're having to train yourself to really start thinking, okay, it's a little outside of the box. It is. Yeah, it it's is. It's like, or I and could it's go like to any behavior. Yeah. It takes time to, learn any new behavior but yes you know i i want to second the thought of health uh, i mean of taste i think apart from some vegetables that just let's be honest they're not delicious right like some some, raw broccoli is not delicious now baked broccoli with a little olive oil and salt and salt is so good right so that's the same food it's just cooked a little differently but I do believe that well, what different, cooked differently. It's cooked. It's, yeah, <laughs> I think that there is this, you know, internal voice that you're choosing to listen to, and this is just part of what I believe. I believe you're listening to a voice that's either telling you it sounds tastes, oddly like Charlie. <laughs> it tastes really good or it tastes really bad, and guess who gets to be. The, the overriding voice. The speaker. It's is, not Charlie. It's you. <laughs> you get to be the controller of that voice. It's like the angel and the devil. On it the is. Shoulder. And I think what happens is we let these voices tell us all these things and control us that aren't the voices that need to be talking to us. Oh, yeah. Personally. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's like you're saying, oh, you know, broccoli tastes so bad. Well, yeah, if you say it does well obviously it does you know it's like no it can taste good or don't eat broccoli brussels sprouts chard are delicious spinach asparagus you right. know and you can sit there and say you know or I, heck eat a piece of fruit if you're really there, just there's you know. a statement that i've heard people say it's like i don't eat vegetables and to me that's like man that that is speaking so much negativity about about vegetables that if you say that so adamantly you're never going to like vegetables because now your your own pride is trying to prevent you from actually ever changing well it's a self-fulfilling prophecy too it's like you know same person who says oh i'm never gonna be out of debt and then they you see them at night just swiping the credit card like yeah like man if you quit swiping the credit card you'd give yourself a chance yeah and so i i think a little bit of this is yes there's some you know we are a product of our past and so like how many however many years you've been eating and whether it's been healthy or not you know that's created you in in the kind of current settings that you're at you know just like the same way we set this podcast or this recorder here based on the microphone and our tone and it's got some settings that are pretty much set but you know if i whisper and you can barely hear me then i got to turn it up and it's like you have a setting that you have programmed based on your years of eating. And whether you're a teenager watching this or an adult. Yeah, you got to change it. You have to change you your settings. you got to adjust the knob a bit. You have to change your settings. And I, I, I do believe that eating healthy can taste really good. And it doesn't oh, yeah. have to be boring. And you can enjoy it. And you just you know have to work a little bit harder to kind of not go status quo. Yeah. A really good example. Again, like the practical thing here is like if you're at home, at least at dinner, because I know a lot of you still cook meals at at dinner. I mean, just put in whatever dish you're trying to make and then add Gordon Ramsay's name to it. And stuff will (laughs) pop up to show you how to make it taste better. There's so much. I mean, there's so many. Like you have the Internet. Well, and you have, I mean, again, I, I, I don't know what people's budgets are, but you have so many services that will deliver food to your door mm-hmm. with a recipe, the exact ingredients you need yeah. that will 
provide you with everything you want. And you combine it, put it in the oven, and set the timer. Or if you don't want to cook, they can deliver you the exact meals already made. Mm-hmm. There's there's services like Favor and like you live in America. It's like there's just it's so many. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's really more. And you got to ask yourself the question. You know, am I willing to put thought and work into really eating healthy in my goal yeah you know and i think it goes back to that we mentioned that last week like what is your goal it's the underlying thing yeah yeah there is a certain level of responsibility where you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say that like no i actually am choosing to go to mcdonald's instead of going to kroger and getting deli meat and apple and that's fine but you got to be real with yourself Mm -hmm. like you also you have to like stop kidding yourself that like i don't have the time to eat healthy you do and i get that it probably won't taste it's not going to taste as good to start off with for sure because again you're learning a new skill Mm -hmm. but the keeping your eye on the prize all right and which is your goal you have to have that like front and center and there is there is a very real possibility that it's not strong enough nor is it time for you to change yet and that's fine yep And we talked about that in a recent episode too. Like you have to hit that point where it's, I've had it. I am ready to change. Exactly. And like nothing will happen and you will keep making those excuses until you hit that point. And I'll tell you, you know, being someone who's been on both sides, like I shared in the beginning of this episode that I lived the fast food life, meaning I, you know, I ate, Gus won't like this, I ate 20 chicken nuggets from McDonald's back when, I don't know if you remember, they used to be five bucks for a, four ninety nine for a 20 for t- pack. Oh, it was a 20? I thought it was 10. No, it was, they had a 20 pack. This was when I was like in seventh grade. I remember I played football. It was at my first year of playing like junior high football and there was McDonald's walking distance and I remember after practice I would walk over there and get a 20 pack before dinner uh this is also before Chick-fil-a apparently (laughs) well yeah I never ate Chick-fil-a growing up Uh, only they had at the mall so I I mean if you follow the the history of their business it's pretty fascinating but um you're talking Chick-fil-a not McDonald's Chick-fil-a was in the mall yeah they started in the mall and Mm -hmm. I did used to hit up their samples because (laughs) They, they gave out samples of little nuggets. chicken nuggets. But no, I would eat actual a 20, chicken. I'd eat a twenty pack of McDonald's nuggets and dip it in sauce and barbecue sauce, and it was so good. And you know, no, it wasn't. So <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and so I, I lived that life, and I live now um, a, a much healthier life. And I just, I can tell you right now, I feel so much better. Like if I can describe to you what one day in a healthy body that is fueled with clean food feels like. And if I could package that for you and have you experience it for one day, you'd never want to go back. And I think people live in this state of they're so unhealthy. Like you're just eating whatever's thrown in front of you in whatever portions you want with whatever sweets on top of it. There's no discipline. No, you're just doing that and you don't even know what it feels like to feel healthy. To have something other than a 20-pack of chicken McNuggets. (laughs) (laughs) To feel healthy. And and again, if I could have you experience that for one day. And and what I mean by feeling healthy is, you know, you're just, um, you're you're not lethargic. Uh, You're not you know, just so exhausted, you're, you're not like pants aren't feeling so super tight. And the only reason I know what it feels to not be healthy is because I used to feel that way, you know? And so if I could, if I could encourage you is there is a bigger reason, there is a purpose, there is a goal that you have, or you wouldn't have watched 25 minutes into this already. And that's what you have to be reminding yourself of why you're passing on McDonald's, why you're passing on Chick-fil-A, why you're not, you know, choosing those really unhealthy convenient options and then just choosing the healthy convenient options because they're out there you know when we make road trips we drove to madison wisconsin and we stopped along the way and we had snacks and you know we you can drive what 1500 miles or however you drive across the nation and 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 stop at gas stations and still make good choices bucky's which for those of you guys yeah like and and we got what we split like a turkey thing. That's right. We did uh, yeah. the the turkey and mm-hmm. uh, some nuts, I think. And so you can eat healthy anywhere. Like it, it's it's you everywhere. You knew at a gas station. It's everywhere. Yeah. You can eat healthy anywhere. You just have to want to. Yeah, I think that's a good way. To, I think that's a good way to bring it to a close. So, um, 
on that note, and I just want to close to like again, the whole time thing I think is a complete myth. I think it's either taste or just a lack of um, a true focus on your goal, and that's okay again. Like yeah, but know that time magically does seem to appear um, when you do reach that point and you say I've had it and I'm ready to change yes. and like let's let's take these steps forward so um, we're going to close on that note but if you do have any more questions feel free to reach or out or if to you're us. at that point where you or if you reached where you have had it and you know that like this is your moment like yeah, that's we're re- hiring a coach right contacting us you know, getting some accountability, having structure to your plan is key because the worst thing you want to do is take this excitement of a decision, like I'm ready to do something and then do nothing with it. Cause yep. that's, that actually becomes more discouraging. You want to take out the time between the inspiration and the action. That's right. Remove and you need, the time. You, yeah. You need a plan, you need a coach you, and you need to execute. And when you do that, amazing results happen absolutely so yeah. reach out and contact us or you can also contact us if you're c4 and looking to sponsor a pretty <laughs> solid show uh That's right. but uh, on that note, on that note guys uh until the next episode which i believe will be 18 18 i'm gus warden i'm charlie we'll see you next time see ya